Right, we're on to the edge. Now we're going to make a scalloped edge and I'm going to use as many colours as I can in this border just to pick up all the vibrant colours that have been going on throughout the blanket so far. And what I've done is I've laid out, I've missed out the greys and the sort of biscuity colours, uh, but I've left, I've brought out all that I've got left of my stronger colours. And I'm going to use them up basically as I go round. I'm not sure how much of each colour I have left, but I don't really want to start new balls of some colours. This one, this lovely violet and the yellow and also my lilac I have almost nothing left of. And I'm kind of tempted to bring in a new ball of these colours because they are so important. So I might, because I do have backups. I do have another ball of the violet and similar with the, the yellow. So I might bring them in. That I'll see as I'm going along. <laughs> Bear with me. This is the, the fun and games of designing a blanket as I'm videoing the tutorial at the same time. These ones I've got reasonable amounts of and I certainly will be able to do some parts of the blanket with that. So I'm going to pick a colour, any old colour. Let's take the pale blue and I'll put these away for the time being. And you don't have to follow my lead in terms of the arrangement of colours. You can if you like, I will list them in the pattern, but if you want to go rogue and do your own thing, certainly you do that. Basically what we're doing is clusters of three scallops in one colour and then changing to another colour and doing three scallops. So that's how we're going to do the edge of the blanket. Right, I'm going to bring up my blanket and it is turned once more onto the front. So my grey round is on the back, if you know what I mean. There, It's reverse side uppermost. I have still got a few ends to sew in, um, but I'll do them next. And uh, I'm going to start in my corner space of the grey. So it's this little corner space above the red. And I'm going to start with a slip knot, of course, and a chain one. And I'm going to, whoops, chain one, and then I'm going to put one double crochet in that same corner space. And uh, that single crochet if you're in the US. And then I'm going to yarn over and come over to the very first space after my treble cluster. And I'm going to put one, two, three, four, this is all going into the same space, five, six, seven trebles. Now you can see this is going to eat up the colour so that it will nice, nicely finish off all these odd balls that you've got left. There's the first scallop and then we want to anchor that scallop with one double crochet in the next space. So there you have the first scallop made and then we just need to continue. That's seven trebles in the next space. Oops. Seven. 
and into the next space with a double crochet. And that's my first two scallops made. So that's kind of echoing these petals all in the, um, the squares in round in section five. Now onto my third, and this is my final one in the blue. So that's one, two, oops, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then I'm going to start my double crochet. So I've just put my hook in and pulled up my yarn, but instead of pulling the yarn through, I'm going to change to my next color, which I think I will make pink. And I'm going to pull it through. So the double crochet stitch is where we change color. Pull that through and I just like to tie it off because that holds it nice and firmly. So I just put a little knot and these ends will get sewn in. So we now have pink on the hook and we can go ahead and do our first scallop in pink with seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's the first of the pink and one double crochet into the next space. And there we see we've changed colour and um, we're on to the pink. Now I'm going to work along to the end with my changing my colour every three. I haven't counted. I know there are 68 clusters of the grey, but I haven't done my sums yet because as I say, we are designing as we go. And there's every chance, although three, does three go into 68? No, it doesn't. So um, we're not going to have exactly three at uh, the end of the, the first side but I'll show you what to do to get round the corner with that. So I'll see you then. The last time you saw me, I was making this pink um, scallop and I've moved on and changed colour every three along the side. You can see I'm using all the brighter colours and every little bit, there was just a tiny scrap of yellow and I used that, I made the, the executive decision to use that yellow because I'm going to bring in another ball of yellow, mainly because I think this and the lilac that I'm about to use, there was so little of it left that I, I really think it's probably a good idea to have an extra ball of these colours because not everybody works to the same tension as I do. And you may have used up your... So when you're doing the pattern, you will have plenty of the yellow and plenty of the lilac for this part of the edge. So I've attached my lilac and it was in the last double crochet, which anchored the third green scallop. And I've got one space before the corner. So I'm going to put a seven treble scallop in there. four, five, six and seven. And then our next space is actually the corner space. So I'm going to put one double crochet in the corner, which would obviously be what would anchor that first class, um, first scallop. I'm going to put another one because we need to get round the corner. 
I'm just going to put one chain to go around the corner because I want to keep this quite small and then put two double crochets in the second part of the corner. That just makes a very tiny scallop, but I'm not going to count that as a scallop. It's just a corner. So we've done one lilac and I'm now going to do two before I change colour on this new side. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and last one. Let's clear this because I have tightened that ball. Six and seven. And then our usual double crochet in the next space along. So there we've got one, two scallops in the lilac and I'm going to keep the repeat of three. I'm not going to start this round this side with as if it was a new uh, side with three lilacs in it. I'm going to just do two. Don't know how this will work out by the time we get down round all four sides. It's all a mystery, but we shall see. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now, what I'm not going to do, um, I can put this in ready and that'll be where I'll change color. What I'm not going to do is repeat the sequence of colors on each side because I want this to be completely random. So whatever color I pick next will be something different from um, the first side. And I'll do that on all four sides. The one thing I'll do is the very, very strong colors like the yellow and the red and the teal, I will make sure I've definitely got them or at least once on each side. It will only just be once on each side. So they do get a balance, but it will be completely random. So I'm going to work on, I haven't decided which colour I'm going to use next. I'll just make that decision. And um, when you're making your blanket, I will give you the option. I will list the colours in, in order, like I said, but you can have the option to bring the changes whichever colours you want to put in. It's a bit of fun, really. And it helps, it actually makes the um, edge go quite quickly when you've got different colours to work with. So I'm going to work around. I might come back at the end of this side if there's something different to happen with the corner. If it's straight plain sailing, I'll just go around all the four sides and I'll see you when we get to the end. But um, I'm just about to continue now and that will be the blanket finished. Hooray! See you in a minute. I got caught up in the excitement of finishing this blanket and then very nearly forgot to come back and show you. But yes, the blanket is finished. I've gone round all four sides with my scalloped edging and I am absolutely thrilled, although I say so myself, with the way this edging looks now. Um, that's the blanket finished. I don't have any more to say about it in these videos. Use your pattern. Please do check out the pattern for all the colour charts and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. This is definitely proven to be one of my most enjoyable um, blankets that I've made. So I hope it is with you too. And I'll see you again in the next blanket and uh, it won't be long. So enjoy, happy crocheting and bye for now.